Well, it's a Video Music Box Live special, and we're talking about censorship and lyrics and videos uh, and some of the things that our young people watch. And um, Reverend Butts, you've gotten everybody's attention in the last month or so um, with your crusade to kind of question some of the things that the rappers are doing. And uh, where are we going now? Well, I hope that we continue in this vein, Brother Ralph. I hope that we continue with a dialogue, conversation, because I think that what some of the uh, rap artists wanted to do was get somebody's attention. And what I hoped to do and hoped to do was to get their attention. Now that we have each other's attention, I think we need to talk about the issues at hand. For instance, uh, the fact that some rap artists, and I must quickly say that uh, this is not specifically uh, on rap music alone. It's rhythm and blues, it's pop, it's country western. It permeates our society and particularly all of our music. But I think what we need to do now is talk about how some of these negative lyrics, particularly as they refer to our women and as we refer to each other, have a tremendous impact on the development of young people. Whether uh, a rap artist wants to be a role model or not, or whether a rap artist wants to be somebody that people look up to or not, it, it is given. Mm -hmm. Once you step out on the public stage, people watch you and they're drawn to you by the power of your art form. And rap is an extremely powerful art form. It comes from the creativity of African people. And anything that comes from our creativity is powerful and it grabs. And therefore, we want to make sure that as it grabs, it also shapes in a constructive and redemptive way our young people to continue our progress against the evils that try to crush us. Now, in putting this show together, you know, one of the things I realized that we're dealing with an older generation and a younger generation sometimes when we have these kind of conflicts. Now, is this conflict, a, is, it, is the, the rap or the lyrics a problem with, with people in your generation who will feel like they can't understand what's going on? Or is this something that is just dealing with specific lyrics? I mean, do you have specific problems with, with particular artists? I mean, maybe somebody else might want to comment on it, but Reverend Butts, I, I address it to you because, I mean, you've been a, you know, mm -hmm. a crusader in our community. And I think somebody who's respect, respected in the community, but I think that a lot of people had problems with the, with the approach also, right. the way it was done. I have hesitated to come down on specific artists. Um, I have debated a few, uh, Luke, for instance, on one television program. But I'm talking about, because I believe that all of the artists have the ability to send powerful, constructive uh, messages and do excellent social commentary. So I'm talking about the lyrics primarily. I'm talking about lyrics that call women female dogs and whores. I'm talking about lyrics that advocate uh, violence against each other, brother against brother, brother against sister, sister against sister. I'm talking about lyrics that reflect a kind of attitude toward a person that sees them as a piece of sexual meat rather than a human being. And I consider that as being a part of the influence that has always taken away from the development of our people. It's another trick of the media. Mm -hmm and it's deceptive and it's dangerous. So my hope in this dialogue is to say to the brothers and sisters in the rap community, uh, we can do better than this and we must do better than this for the sake of our collective people, for the sake of our struggle, and even for the sake of humanity because it is important to say, and then I'll stop, that this is not only a condition in the community of people of African descent, this is a condition also in the larger community, the white community. And so therefore, we've got to worry about the, not only the moral erosion in our own community, but the complete deterioration of the moral fabric in America. Mm -hmm. Ice-T, you're an, uh, an artist. And when you hear somebody questioning what you can do as an artist, how do you feel about that? Well, as far, far as I'm concerned, what the Reverend is doing, as far as um, saying that he thinks that the musicians, the artists, should have um, a moral responsibility to take upon themselves mm -hmm. to say something positive. I don't see any problem with that, you know? I mean, I think everybody has a right. It's free speech. You say you don't like it. But running a head-on, uh, a full-out attack on the music, I mean, I just like to ask the Reverend a question. Are you running for political office or plan to run for any political office? That's a fair question. No. 
I'm not. So running. if you do, then everybody out there shouldn't vote for you because what you just told would be a lie, right? If you ever in the future decide to run for a political office, because maybe you're not going to do it now, but in the future, are you planning on? Ice-T, I can't tell you what the future holds. I can tell you that I'm not doing this because I'm trying to build any base for a political office. I can tell you that I'm doing it because I have a concern for our community, as you suggested earlier. And it's not an all-out attack on the music because we say continually and constantly that uh, we think that the music is very powerful, that it has great social commentary. For instance, when you talk about the realities of police brutality, you know, I'm the one who went to Washington to call John Conyers to come here to take a look at what police are doing, were doing then and are doing now to many of our young people. So I, I, I know that's real. See, I just don't see anything constructive as far as, um, you know, making statements against rap because, first off, I don't really believe, you know, a lot of the people that will jump on your bandwagon even, un even listen to rap. Well, you know I what I'm saying? I'd like, to, I'd like to just kick in here because I'm, I'm, I'm the oldest person around this table, and I, I dig rap, okay? Mm -hmm. I dig it from, but it has to be positive, and it has to have a, a message, a social message, a cultural message. And um, um, the, the young people that we just saw were right on when they talked about, you, don't, you may not want to be a role model, but you are. You stepping out there on the stage, those young people are looking at you and they're hearing everything you're saying and they want to copy everything you're doing. And trust me, they will be violent because they don't understand. There are young girls who do not understand that what it is to be a gangster B, but they know that that beat is slamming and they want to be a, a gangster B. Do you think B? you understand what, what hardcore rap is? See, I do hardcore rap. I don't mm -hmm. do pop rap. Mm -hmm. I don't do R&B rap. I do hardcore rap. I'm what is considered the inventor of mm -hmm. the genre. Mm -hmm. I was the first person to ever get a sticker put on my record. I was the first person to ever be the PMRC step two. Mm -hmm. I'm number one on the PMRC's list. Okay. The only reason I rap like that is because I did not know how to rap any other way. This is the life I'm living. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the audience that I attracted were the, were the kids that did not listen to anybody else. And with an unconventional enemy, it takes unconventional tactics. So what your tactics and the, and the positiveness that you guys want, that leaves a whole sector of, of people that listen to music out in the open because they ain't going to listen to you no matter what you say. I go to the penitentiaries. I talk to the brothers that are stuck and ain't coming out. Why? Because I talk in their language. I talk in the dialogue of the streets. You would like in a perfect world for things to be different. But they simply aren't. Well, you, you might want to talk to the brothers inside, but you have children outside who are listening, and you can but say that's that. But that's why you have a parent. There's yeah. a parent. There's a parent. Well, there's a lot a of their parents. A lot of their parents. <laughs> well, that's not my fault. I know it's not your fault, but you have to. Uh, you have to be responsible as a brother. You have to be responsible. So what it's I not do your is, fault. But what I should do is, is make a record that a, a four-year-old could listen to. But what happens to what happens when you go out and you watch Red Fox do comedy for adults? These records have parental guidance stickers on them. In my, in my opinion, a sticker that says parental guidance, any parent that needs a sticker that says guide their child... Should be guiding them. Doesn't, you shouldn't have to have a sticker. It so it's not my fault the breakdown of the families in America. This, you know, my daughter, I have a daughter who listens to all to. the music, and I guide her through this music. But life is X-rated. But you don't Sister. want to add to it. You no, have to no. do what you have to do in your spot. Well, right? I think that we're going to find all different types of music. Right. And, and one of the things that is, and in, in hopefully tonight we'll understand a little bit more about rap music. And uh, Cynthia now does a magazine called Right On, yes. which has been around for 17 years. And um, some people say that rap goes through uh, changes. Is it going through a change right now where it's a little bit harder than normal? Um, to some degree it is because, you, well, what you're seeing now are a lot more videos with some of the gangster type language, the, the gangster type feel to it. However, there are other forms of rap that have developed through the emergence of rap as a popular art form that is very profitable for the record companies. You've got various sectors. You do have the gangsters, you've got the, the West Coast element the Los Angeles element where you have NWA, EZE, people of that nature, Ice Cube, of course, Ice-T. Then you've got another sector 
Northern California, which is a completely different form of rap. Um, they call themselves the hieroglyphics, the souls of mischief, Del the funky homo sapien, who's mm -hmm. Ice Cube's cousin, and they have a completely different form. It's more of a fun-loving, cute type rap, and the rappers themselves have completely different personalities. They look more like the teen idol, clean, uh, clean cut type. Oh. Let me, I'm sorry to cut you up, but mm -hmm. why is it that, you know, Ice-T and, and people that do the hardcore stuff are always the people that are kind of like cued right in on it. We don't cue in on the, uh, what we want to call positive rappers. Because I hate to say it since I am a media person, mm -hmm. but the media will pick out a specific sector that will help sell news, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. those are the people that we invariably focus on. That is the problem that we have now. That is the reason why a lot of things that Reverend Butts has said have been taken out of context. That's why a lot of things that Ice-T may have right. written lyrically have been taken out of context because people are focusing on issues and making them bigger than what they actually well, are. There that. are hundreds and hundreds of rappers. Many of them are very, very good, very, very positive, very, very clean. And you're not going to really hear about them anywhere except maybe in the pages of Write On Magazine where we express only the positivity in the music business. But the media distorts what is happening and this is a way for them to sell papers or create various TV shows that do well and I think that's what the problem is. I don't think that people have gone into rap deeply enough to really even know what rap is. Mm -hmm. I think the best thing to do is if, if we have a problem with it, the Reverend and, and um, this young the sister here, praise the good rap. Right. Just praise the good rap. Right. But why do you have to turn around and, and break down on something else which is a sector of America that without this music will be left open. I mean like I'm saying when we do the hardcore shows only a special kind of kids come. And here's one more question. Why do the kids gravitate to the gangsters? Let's, because let's, let's, those are the, the, the roles. But no, 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 no. We're not the only roles. There's a lot of rappers. Right. Why are you worrying about, right. why is your you, kid you're saying, picking out you're the saying, hardcore rapper rolling, to follow? It rolls out in all different ways. Like these t-shirts with these signs on them, they are absolutely ludicrous. But this back the whatever up and niggas are not whatever and uh, um, bees aren't ain't nothing <coughs> mm -hmm. but it. Yeah. I mean, that, it, it just keeps mushrooming and rolling over. It's a domino effect. The question effect. is, why do the kids like that? They tonight? like it because no one's telling them, no one's taking the time to talk to a lot of children and make them think. No, it's because of the conditions oh. around and the society, them set up right. that right. and makes that turn out to be and, what's attractive. I want right. to pick up on something Ice-T said earlier. He said it takes unconventional methods to deal with unconventional oh, enemy. And it seems to me that... Um, the presentation of people as uh, bees and whores and niggas is not unconventional. It's very conventional okay. and plays to an enemy that has always sought to keep us as subhuman. Mm -hmm. Now, why do people gravitate to the music? Because it is easy at times to appeal to people's lower nature. It is more difficult creativity, in terms of creativity and in terms of getting people to hear when you try to raise their standards. So a lot of young people, as young people are and will be, will gravitate to that which they feel is exciting and dangerous and new. And there is a sense in which um, I think that the social commentary that is done may be important. But I've got to say this. Many young people see the style on the screen. They see ice tea and say, man, that's bad, you know. And they want to be that, mm -hmm. you know. But being Is that, that wrong? yes, as okay. far as I'm concerned, being that does not give them the what they need in order to succeed in life in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. It will help Ice T succeed, but it will not help them succeed. Mm -hmm. How could you possibly say that? I mean, do you think being you will help them succeed? I think so. Well, I think being me will help them succeed. You got to take, when you look at somebody like myself, you got to ask yourself the question, are you going to follow the character I play in the rap or the person I am? I'm a brother that came from nothing to something. I run businesses. I employ 200 brothers from the ghetto. I'm, I employ sisters. I run corporations. They I, know. They don't know. They don't know that. They know well, why that don't they? I, I think your kids know. Maybe you don't know. No. You don't they know. They don't know Let's that. Let's go to a phone call. That's they the importance that. of this. They don't know. They don't Let's know Let's go that. to a phone they call. They see you up there. Hold on a second. Mm -hmm. Hi, you're on the air. Um, yes. Um, my name is Penelope, and this is, um, well, praises to everyone on the panel. Uh, Mr. Ice-T, my son 
okay? He looks at a lot of rappers, and he try to portray, basically, not just him, several children, portray what y'all do, call yourself being cool, they pants sagging, and Reverend Butts and the young lady, they basically covered what I was going to ask you anyway. And they don't know your businesses, okay, that you have your business, man. They don't know that they see the video. Well, why don't we talk about it so they can know that? At least now in New York City, we have an opportunity to. And also, too. as a parent, I think that's what parental guidance is there for. You know, I mean, if I take my kid to see Arnold Schwarzenegger in a movie, I'm going to let him know that he's not really the Terminator. He's an actor. And watch this. You know, that's called parental guidance. You cannot send a kid out into the street without parental guidance. That's why we have parents. <laughs> I think that that's an important point to bring up. I'm sorry, Reverend Butts. Sorry. Um, because one of... One, one, um, thing that I would like to say is that we do admire the rappers, we admire all the entertainers, but the parents cannot expect the rappers to educate their children. Relatives cannot expect the teenagers to be educated by celebrities who are teenagers themselves. These people do not have the experience to be able to really teach our children that much of anything. They can, of course, share their advice on how they got started in show business. They can share the experiences that they have lived in their life so that people will know where they came from. But it is the responsibility of the adults to teach the children right yeah, from wrong. We cannot right. put this much responsibility on these right. rappers. And I think there's a, a good, I think there's a plus to that and a minus that, first of all, the reality is that many of our young children do not have strong parents. Mm -hmm. They come from children themselves who had children. Mm -hmm. And so therefore it is uh, the responsibility of a larger segment of our society to take um, responsibility for the children and help to guide them, which is a part of what this is about. The second thing is to speak to uh, Ice-T's success. Um, and the businesses that he has and who he employs I think is commendable but it is also important to make note of how you gain the money that you use to employ people that you use to set up business mm -hmm. because you see I think it's important for us to talk about how we get money for instance an Ivan Bosky or Michael Milken are filthy rich beyond anybody's imagination around this table or were but they got that money you know, by exploiting people. Now, one would say that, you know, that's not the right way to get money or by selling drugs. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying that people who denigrate humanity, who uh, use misogynistic lyrics, uh, who glorify violence, uh, money made in that way may not be the kind of money that we would like people to applaud. But as far as I'm concerned, if I don't believe in Christianity, I might say that the church is taking money from the community unfairly, asking for money. And you're making money illegally as far as I'm concerned. You don't know what I've done to get my money. I did an honest job. I was out on the streets hustling. I was doing wrong. And I've done totally legit ever since and taking care of my friends and their families and their families' families. Now you're saying what I've done has put has harmed more people? You can't show me one kid that's ever been hurt from an Ice-T record. Let me lift this up again. And Can let, you? Let us depersonalize it in this sense. No, but you got personal right there, because no. what you said was, well, the way Ice-T got the money I might not that. be... Well, that's what you just said. No, I didn't. What I said that we have to be careful and look at how people make their money. So you're insinuating that I made my money wrong. Uh, no. And I'm insinuating you're making money wrong, and I'm insinuating right now that you're trying to be a star by going on no. TV Let me tell you and what. turning this out. Let me tell I'm you thinking what. that you wouldn't be on television if it wasn't for rappers and other people that could debate you. You'd just be a guy in Harlem at a church. No, I, that's not right. That's true. Everybody knows that. But, but the, the well, How else would you get on television? Let me tell you what the... You, let me tell you. How else would you get on television? Because we have uh, built a lot of housing for homeless families because we've given brothers who've come out of jail jobs because we've gone in to sit with them because we fought with the police to protect young brothers in the street from brutality and I've done the same you thing know. now I've done so, the same thing is, you know, but now I just wanted to yeah, I've done the same I wanted, thing I, and more I want to help more people than I you. want to tell you what I was insinuating so so you don't so you don't misunderstand I am insinuating however that people who gain money by using the kinds of lyrics that dehumanize and denigrate and glorify violence, I am saying that that kind of money 
is not money that I consider to be well earned. And I'm not stopping your That's criticism. Your opinion. Exactly. Okay. Ice. Exactly. And what I'm saying is that this opinion I am putting out there to try to galvanize our community to raise the standards not only of musicians or artists, but also the standards of the church. Because I have been critical also of the church for doing similar things. So this is not just a, a kind of narrow focus on artists. Let me ask you a question. If Ice-T was today, after the show, was to say, look, Reverend Butts, I have $100,000. I'd like to start a school with you in Harlem. Would you do business with him? Uh, no, we'd have to talk more. Yeah, right. No, because say, I've been offered money by Philip Mars. Mm -hmm. I've been offered money I by R.J. Reynolds. I wouldn't give church no money. You see? Mm -hmm. And so the idea is we'd have to talk more. See, because I, 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 don't, I, don't I don't believe I don't believe we're that I far apart. I wouldn't give your church no money. Just you know why? Hold on, there's people right. out there that it really takes need it away money. From and the if you would turn the money down just because you think you got a problem with me, that's ridiculous. You did what I'm saying? If I'm out trying to help people. There's one point that takes it away from the personal, and that is that the reality is that we have a lot of young children who sit in front of television. You're absolutely right about parental guidance that do not have parental guidance and their whole life is television and all they do is watch their stars there's no parental guidance you're right and that's the reality and we have to deal with that mm -hmm. wherever we are we have to deal with let's that. go to a phone call hello you're on the air hello yes yes uh, i'd like to ask ice t ralph a question if you don't mind no problem uh I'd like to know, basically, if you think that setting role model and example for young children is something that is optional or something that is mandatory for all of us. Do you consider that to be optional, Ice? Well, I, I put it like this. I never woke up one morning and wanted to be a role model. I live my life, and some children choose to model themselves after me. As long as they model themselves after who I really am, and that's a person that was out in the streets doing wrong and now found a way to help people, then they are okay. I tell parents to watch the kids and do not, if they role model themselves after some of the people I play in my records, they're going to end up hurt. The same way if they model themselves after Clint Eastwood or anybody else. You dig what I'm saying? Because in a lot of these records, we act out characters. But I think it's a little heavy when you take musicians and put them in the place of the parents. And it ain't my fault. I didn't have any parents ever since I was 17 years old. You know what I'm saying? Really, I had no parents ever since I, my, my father passed when I was in the seventh, and I'm an orphan. Okay? So I, I, I raised myself in the streets. So the dialogue that comes out of my mouth is what society put in it. And, you know, a, a lot of uh, the, the, the viewers out on the street when we did our um, interviews said that, you know, basically they respect what the rappers are talking about because it is reality and they can relate to it. Everything that they hear and they see, they can relate to it firsthand. And they may have a problem with relating to you, Cal Reverend Butts, and, and maybe you, Coral, as an older person. And maybe it's just a, a situation of generation. Uh, well, it's not just generation. It's, it, we've all, where we sat, have let things happen and let them get out of control. We but all, have you talked to young people? You've talked to young I've people. I've talked to young people constantly. Mm -hmm. I do. But the point is that, that you have to catch them at an early age and you have to do exactly what I see saying, parental guidance. And mm -hmm. a lot of us young people in our community do not have parental guidance because a lot of children are having children. Mm -hmm. And so they, they don't understand the true ramifications of their acts. Mm -hmm. They don't. Um, I just want to put that phone number out there again. It's 212-669-2222. We're going to be going to some phones in a second. Um, Reverend Buss? Um, media images are important. Um, you know, we, we, we were outraged by Amos and Andy. We, uh, we were outraged by a, a number of things that portrayed us as ignorant and foolish and non-progressive. We are concerned about some of that now. Um, we hear Ice-T, and I don't, this is something else I don't think is fair because, you know, all of this gets on Ice-T because right. he sits here by himself. Mm -hmm. But we, we hear a number of rappers who put things out there that are much more provocative in nature and hardcore mm -hmm. than even some of Ice-T stuff. And uh, what we're saying about them is, uh, for instance, as one told me, he said, I deal in hardcore. You know, my stuff is pornographic. Mm -hmm. Then we're saying that perhaps it should be sold in pornographic stores. Mm -hmm. You know, it should not be in the mix with everything else since it is defined that way. 
and see what we because we're not talking about censorship. Is that a problem of, of the artist or is that a problem of the record company? Well, it's Ralph both. is stickered and you're supposed to be 18 to be able to buy it. Now whose fault is it? Is it ours? We allow the stickers to go on the record. You are supposed to be 18 years old to buy an Ice-T record. Now, where does the breakdown come in? I make Stop. records for adults. When I, when I went, used to go to Las Vegas and watch Red Fox and Leroy and Skillet and all them, they ain't let no kids off in there. Right. You know what I'm saying? It ain't my fault. I make records for adults. I make records for somebody who sits across the table the same age as me. I talk to them the way I would talk to one of my homies. I don't talk down to kids. I talk straight across the table. White kids pick it up. Mm -hmm. Ooh, 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 let's hear what this is. Maybe your kid got it. Mm -hmm. Whose fault is that, though? You see what I'm saying? Ooh, he's listening to it. But I talk a straight across the table, hardcore, to a kid that'll take a gun and shoot you in your face. And I'm the one who talk, keeps dialogue with them. And if you listen to my records, really, I don't tell them to do that. I say, if this is what you do, this is where you're going to end up. Mm -hmm. And if there's a caller out there that can find a lyric in one of my records that says something different than that, do it. Let's go to a phone call. Let's go to a phone call right now. Hi, you're on the air. Uh, yes, Ralph. Um, peace to everybody on the panel. My name is a brother named Mike. I host a rap show uh, locally on one of the college stations here for Delphi. My question is to uh, the Reverend. Uh, I want to know if you think that it's practical to focus on rap specifically when really the reality of the situation is that the problem that, that our community and our culture faces is one of white domination of us, not only in this country, but globally that black people all over the, the planet are being dominated by white people and we're taking our cues from the culture that, that oppresses us. Uh, what is the practicality of focusing in, focusing in excuse me, on something uh, such as rap that really is reflective of, of the circumstances surrounding and facing the black community as opposed to uh, one that creates situations? Well, I think that you have a good point in terms of pointing out um, the... Uh the reality of, uh, of racism in, in America and in the world. But I think also that one cannot take away from one's own group uh, the responsibility for fighting that in constructive ways. Now, uh, we don't want to perpetuate anything. We don't want to perpetuate negative imagery. We don't want to perpetuate uh, uh, our continued oppression. We want to break free from that. And I think that the challenge in our community is always to uh, say, let us raise the standards. Now, I simply engage in raising uh, some issues about the fact that there may be some realities that we don't like, but the portrayal of the reality on the television screen, uh, through lyrics, conveys what we're trying to counteract to younger people who then pick it up and think it's all right. It's all right to call a woman a, a bee. It's all right to call each other a, a nigger. It's all right to call somebody a whore. Or it's all right to go out and shoot somebody. Well, what, and I think that that's not, that's not the way uh, that we ought to be going. And I think that there needs to be the challenge. Ralph, you said earlier that many people uh, objected to the way I approached it. Mm -hmm. Ice-T claims it's grabbing publicity. Mm -hmm. Well, let me put it to you this way. I think way. it just kind of reminded us of the way some other people grab publicity, and it kind of like, I think, well, I feel no, the same I way. I he's grabbing All publicity. Right, well, okay. Let me, let me, let me, let me finish up. the point then. <laughs> the idea is to say, well, if we're confronted by these T-shirts, if we're confronted by these images, if we're confronted by these lyrics, mm -hmm. then we, got, we have to stand and counter them. And, you know, there is no quiet way to counter him, just there was no quiet way of somebody saying, well, do you think that if we do this, it's going to have a negative impact on the community? Well, no, I mean, they just had, put him out there and started the, making money. You've had rappers or artists in the church before. Sure. And so, I mean, why couldn't the dialogue have happened from in the church or amongst a number of other churches or in the Apollo in Harlem or something like that? Maybe it could have started in that, uh, that approach instead of it going into a media thing and we brought in all kinds of other folks. I think that was, I mean, my concern too, honestly. Well, it's a good concern, but I think that if you're going to really reach out to the large segment of the uh, people, of the African uh, American community, mm -hmm. then you're going to have to use what's available to you. I mean, the same way that if a person wants his or her record to reach the largest audience, they don't quietly slip it in. They try to market it and get the idea out. Mm -hmm. I want to create a climate in our community where this kind of behavior and these kinds of lyrics and these kinds of images are simply unacceptable. I want people to talk about it more. I want people to get it out more. I want Ice-T to be challenged 
you know, <laughs> so that he just doesn't roll along and think that it's okay. But it's who not. Who determine what's okay? You? I think the large, no, no, large brother, community. the larger community. But the larger that. community is the one buying the records. No, they're not. But you are making money off those who do buy your records. So you're trying and to say the I'm, larger community doesn't want the music. That's what I'm saying. Then and why what are I'm the records still And what sell? I'm trying to do is cut in. You got to disagree. To I disagree with that. I disagree. You trying to cut in on the money? No, I'm trying to cut out your money. I, right, I, that's why I don't like. You. I, I think that people <laughs> people are missing an issue here. Um, rap music is selling very very well, and it is not just selling to black youth. In fact, one of the largest audiences of the hardcore music is the population of teenage white males. They are very, very interested in this form of music. They want to dress similar to iced tea, wear the caps, whatever. And we have to understand that somebody is reaching the young people as a whole. You can go to any foreign country and you will find any of those kids, whether they really know what the lyrical content of the music is or not, they love rap. Rap is too big to ignore. I think that what is going to happen now is that we have to rechannel the media publicity that is being um, perpetuated about rap because as I said earlier we are focusing too much on the wrong issues I can name hundreds and hundreds of rappers that are coming out with relevant commentary um, educational lyrics mm -hmm. there are rappers that actually go to schools and try to teach children there are many rappers that are working within the community we need to work more with these rappers we need to expose these rappers to the general public more because they are the ones who actually dominate instead of the people that we're talking mm -hmm. about right now well, Cynthia I just came back off a lecture tour I spoke at all the Ivy League schools and elementary schools and junior high schools and when I talk go to schools I talk to the kids about drugs crime and how not to get involved with it now the reason the kids listen to me is because I've already set up this image of yo I'm just like you I know what you are and they listen to me I don't know if they're gonna listen to somebody else that comes in there maybe with a suit and a tie I use the imagery to draw the audience to me but I always drop anti-drug messages I always drop different things if you get hung up on words like nigga I wear the word nigga like a badge of honor because to me there was a field nigga and it was a house nigga the field niggas was the real niggas. I'll always be a field nigga. As long as white people look at me, I'm a nigga. I'm their worst nightmare. I, and as far as the word bitch, bitch stands for somebody who thinks the world is revolving around. I got a record called Some of You Niggas is Bitches Too. It's about men being bitches. I could be a bitch. You know what I'm saying? But if you get hung up on words, you have to. could anybody here define profanity to me? You have to get hung up on the words. Let's go to you're a rapper. Just before we, yeah. I'm sorry. Let's, let's, let's go into a phone call. Though. Um, hi, you're on the air. Hi, my name is Mark Green from Jersey City. Yes, how you want? And I want to address to the pastor. I want to know why is he picking on a rap? Why can't he pick on society as a whole? Because society has bad names on TV with girls walking around with doing bad commercials with their drawers all showing. Mm -hmm. You got all the sports makers throwing people out of the window. That's starting violence. So if you're going to pick on rap, let's pick on the whole society as a whole and let's deal with it like that. Let's not stop, pick a little, take a rap because rap people doing something bad. Let's pick a society as a whole. I want to know if Kenny answered that for me, please. Thanks. Yeah, well, we answered at the beginning of the show. We said that this is not a focus simply on rap. It is that rap enters the center stage simply because it is so powerful and because it grabs so many people. Um, you all know that we took out against the same kinds of beer ads and cigarette ads that he's talking about. We whitewashed the billboards. We challenged the major corporations. So this is not an isolated thing. This is not something that we've just come into. And you know we've been wrestling with the whole question of racism and domination of a people. So it is not something new. And I think part of the problem is that it is uh, 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 that many people do not understand um, the extent to which we do look at the entire society in this question. Rap just pops up because, as always, it is the dominant form. It is the powerful form, and people is that want bad? to focus I like, on it. I like, I no, I didn't say I that was know. bad. I want to answer yeah. this to the guy out there. Mm -hmm. I think they attack rap because rap can get him on the front page. He says it's the dominant thing, but it's the vehicle that takes you to the top of this media thing, right? If you attack the, the beer commercials, you don't get as much news. So attack somebody black. Attack kids from the streets that have created another kind of music and are trying to come up. And say you're not doing it the way I would like you to do it. Well, then if you don't like it like that, make your own kind of rap. But every kid 
kid that's in a studio that's from the ghetto. I don't care what they're saying on that record. They're doing something positive and they're not in the streets no more. And they're getting out of trouble. And how you could tell me that this is wrong, I don't understand it. You know, these kids are doing... I mean, I'm down with hardcore, and I'm down to hip-hop till I die. And basically, there's nothing that nobody in rap could really do wrong to me as long as they are not straddling the line with rap and crime. But if once you get out of the life, you got anything. This, is the, this saved my life, homie. You know what I'm saying? And I'm getting my homies out of the pen, and I'm taking care of them. And I'm not saying nothing negative. Regardless of what you think I'm saying, I ain't saying nothing negative. You just got a problem with the way I grew up and the way I live. No, I don't you know, have a problem with And you the think you that what the other kids are going to get it. But I ain't, got no, I ain't got no love for nobody like you. I don't care if you're a reverend. I don't care as far as I'm concerned. You're the devil, man. Yeah. Well, see, I do have <laughs> love for you, and that was, that's what makes the difference between you No, but you it's and not I. if you want to take the food yeah. out of my child's mouth. I don't really want to well, take the food out. you said you want to take my that's money. That's right. I said I wanted to cut the sales. And I want to do the same you. know, you. For, for the records. It's because on. I think that you know, because you said so at the beginning of the program, that what you're about is positive. What you're about. Well, but I don't now. think you're qualified to judge what's positive. No, 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 no. I don't think. How, I mean, we got to you say, see Luke you, on there. You, and you see the girls in bikini. Oh, is that yeah. negative? Yes, brother. Yeah. Why? Yes, because Why? it exploits the women. Right. Well, then what do you think? Do you think the, or are those women slaves in there, or do those women want to do that video? They know well, they, oh, they don't know. So they're ignorant now. Well, so you just dissing the sisters, no, right? No, don't don't try to shortcut it and turn it on. No, those women are ignorant. No, no, no. They don't. Do you know better? You're using no. That's what yes, I'm saying. I do I'm know saying better. You guys know what's I good know for better. everybody. I know better. I don't think I so. I know that that propagates rape. What? How somebody walking Ooh. around half naked will only entice someone who is sick out there Dude, to, I, to do You sound to, real stupid. Hey, Coral. what can I tell you? Coral, what can I say? That's real. That's real. I, that propagates rape. A That's girl real. in a bathing a suit propagates rape? Hold on you never second. wore a bathing suit? Yes, I did, but I, not like that. Oh, you didn't like that bathing suit. Oh, you old-fashioned. No, don't give me the old-fashioned. Don't give me the old-fashioned. Hold on one Get up. Once again, this is a Video Music Box live special, and we're here. We're talking about censorship, and we're talking about some of the things. I need ice. I need ice. Hold I on. need ice to educate. Okay, since hold he's on the one second. Here. Let me ask I a question. A Let me ask I, a question. I need, you, I need you to tell us, Reverend Butts. What, Reverend yeah. Butts? Yeah. Thank yeah. you. This uh, is my show. Yes. <laughs> Reverend Butts. I don't mean to censor you, but you have to stop talking for a second here. Um, one of the things that we want to talk about is, you know, young people go out and listen to this music. Now, you just said this propagates rape. Mm -hmm. Now, I think that you know we have a lot of young people that are very smart nowadays. Mm -hmm. I think we take for, take for granted how smart some of these young people are. And I think you deal with some of those young people. Yes. They listen to this music. You have, you have a son, you have daughters, or you have, you have mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. They listen to this music. It's yes. very possible yes. that they may listen to a Luke record at one time of the, at mm -hmm. some part in the day. And they don't go out and want to rape women. You have some people that might listen to an Onyx record and don't go out and throw their guns in the air. Mm -hmm. How do we address those kids now? I mean, those th they're not being affected by it. Is it something that... You know, a lot of people say that the music is affecting the kids, but, I mean, I have a younger brother. Mm -hmm. He goes to Morehouse College, mm -hmm. and, you know, he likes all those records. He mm -hmm. likes Luke, he likes Onyx, he likes everything. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, he doesn't come in the house, and he's not calling you. anybody, you know, a, a, a bitch or anything mm -hmm. like that. He's not using these words that we're concerned is corrupting our, our, our mm -hmm. children. But there mm -hmm. are a, seg a segment of our society, of our children, who do not have someone that can discuss this with them, mm -hmm. and when they see it, they just they copy. And well, that's the, that's that? the group that? that I'm concerned about. Okay. I'm not concerned about your brother who's at Morehouse yeah. or my children who, who, who have, have had discussions or people that I'm involved with or youth that I'm involved that we have discussed. I'm talking about the ones who are out there by themselves mm -hmm. who don't have any. Where's the source of that problem? Though? But she's saying people that are unstable. That's what she's saying. No, unstable no, don't, don't put words in my mouth well, people, because I will use inst unstable if I want to right. because I read, jumped on that word that you jumped all over me about. So, so don't... Unstable is not what I'm talking about. No guidance? Don't, don't, well, tell no, me what you mean. No guys what? No guidance? Yeah, no guidance. Whose fault is it that they don't have guidance? It's not yours and that's not... Oh, yes, it's all of ours, okay? It's all of ours. Because we have to start now paying attention to our youth. We do... It's our responsibility. It's yours, mine. Wherever we sit right here around this table, it is our responsibility that's to put a stop, I mean, to, put a stop to this. But who makes the judgment on what is going to hurt somebody who's unstable? This is my question. And I think that the answer to that question is not, does not necessarily reside in one person. Mm -hmm. I think it resides in what comes out of an understanding between what we're saying and what you're saying. 
I don't think that there's a lack of an opportunity for us to reach what people call common ground. Because I believe that when you say you talk to students in school when, and you tell them not to do drugs, when you say, look, Reverend Butts, I'm in the studio, I'm saving my homies, I'm giving them jobs. That, to me, makes sense. What I'm saying, but I just, listen, man, let's take a look at this, as one brother said, this whole system and what it means. Let's take a look at it historically. Let's take a look at uh, the, uh, the abuse that our artists have taken and how the, the idioms have been used even against us. And then let us see where we go from there. But Reverend, and I think we can get there. And you're right by saying that it is not all rappers, no, which is why we come out and say we're not against a rap idiom. But I'd like to say something in ICE's defense. When we're talking about the fact that he has utilized the money he has made in rap to employ various people to run his record label production companies, et cetera, and you're saying that the way he got the money was wrong, well, we were talking earlier about the fact that we're in the 90s now. We don't have conventional methods. Who do you know would actually let him walk into a bank and lend him the money to start a record label? <laughs> I mean, that is not mm -hmm. the way that he would have been able to do it. He had to, he had to start his business in the only fashion that he knew how. He had to start his business in whatever means were at, at his disposal. Mm. You know, and that's something that we have to think about. We cannot expect all conventional methods to work these days because circumstances have changed so v drastically in the world that we just can't, we can't just pigeonhole anything anymore. Ice-T is not the only rapper with a production company or a record label or whatever. Many other people who may have started out in some type of life of crime, in fact, have actually turn their lives around and they have done well they have done something to help the community they are employing people many of these people would not have been able to go anywhere and gotten a job somewhere else mm -hmm. the thing That's of it is what i want to say is in my heart i do not feel i'm doing anything wrong mm -hmm. in my heart i do not feel i'm doing anything wrong the way i talk is how i talk like i say i don't f see anything wrong with saying nigger you might i don't see anything wrong with saying the word bitch if the woman is a bitch OK, I could be a bitch. All right. So I don't see anything wrong with that. I don't need anybody to tell me that I'm still wrong if I don't feel it. And ain't nobody here can do that. Let's but go, God, let's go to a phone call. Hi, you're on the air. Hello. Hi, my name is Earl Jones. I'm calling from East Orange, New Jersey. I believe Reverend Button and NXT both have correct issues. It's a little distasteful to see the two brothers sitting there arguing about something in our community. My question is, is there a way, a process, in which we can incorporate the ideas of both gentlemen to come out with something positive for our community? Let me just say this in answer to that. First of all, I don't consider this an argument. Secondly, um, Ice-T makes a strong point when he says nobody can tell him really but God. But I think that all of us need to benefit of a discussion mm -hmm. so that we understand where we're coming from. It may appear that Ice-T could change his mind. It may. It may be that I could change mine. Or it may be that in the midst of this discussion with Ice-T, Dr. Dre, Luke, and some others, we can take a look at who we are, where we are, and where we want to go. Mm -hmm. See, now, I have a response to the issue of unconventional methods that Ice-T would still be out there because he couldn't go into the bank to raise money to start a record company. All right? But I think that, again, and this is not at Ice-T, this is not an insinuation at anybody, but I think that you have to say that there are things, for instance, that you, you may not do, you will not do uh, in order to start. Ice-T say, hey, man, there's some stuff that I ain't going to do just to make no record. Mm -hmm. All right? But... Then we've got to get into, well, Ice, brother, what is this that we see that's wrong with saying, hey, if I see somebody's a nigga, I'm going to call him a nigga. Then we say, yeah, but when that little brother starts calling his other little brother a nigga, and he really don't know the difference, we've got to try to figure out a way to curb that, because he may not have any parents. I might be able to get to him. I might not be able to get to him because I got on a suit and tie, but you may be able to. Mm -hmm. So let's find out where we are. Now, that's... Where I, what I want to say. And then we hope to be able to get Ice-T to come back 
and sit down with people like me, but with other people from the rap community, mm -hmm. and talk about this away from all I this. I think that there was no doubt on Reverend Butts that people wanted to sit down and talk with you because they commended you on the things that you had already done. Mm -hmm. And I think that probably the biggest question and the biggest problem that, that people have expressed to me is that your approach. And they just felt like, why? We're right here in the community. Why not come to us, brother? Because, I, as I said Here's earlier, my television show. You could have came to me at any time. We needed, <coughs> I think, what we have. We needed the same way this whole thing has run over us. Are we us. falling back into that media situation? No, again? no, no, no. The no, same no. thing that the same way people pick on on a guy like Ice T or a guy like Ice Cube. Are we then letting them control us again no, when no. we go to that that, no, that 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 approach? Because it would continue then in this. It does not have to continue in this. Mm -hmm. This can be taken away if Ice T is willing to sit down, but not just Ice T, but the rest are willing to mm -hmm. sit down across that table. But the larger community has to say. Yes, this is going on. We don't have to talk to the media. We can talk to each other. Then we can say strongly and more closely to each other how we feel. This is what I hope to achieve because I think we can create the climate <coughs> whereby we can take this stuff, uh, the negativity, away. And then the hardcore stuff, which is geared for adults, they want to continue to make it. Then we know that it is for adults. Mm -hmm. And we can really begin to take it from children. But I think... I agree. That people need to see. I agree with as far as the hardcore stuff is made for adults, and you know, it's it's not really geared at little stuff. I mean, I've had t my tapes, and little kids have said, "Let me get the tape." I'm like, "Nah, you know, I don't want you getting this mm -hmm. tape." You know, what I'm saying, if your mom says you can have it, it's cool. But what I'm what I'm getting at is that I think where the hardcore rappers and rap as a whole says is right now all these people that are coming and attacking us are Johnny Come Latelys. We've been doing this for ten years. We've been out here rapping, rocking houses, and everything. Now all these people with these other motives come to us and say, "Well, you rappers should do this. You rappers should rap about this. You rappers should rap about that." But you got to understand, we wouldn't be so powerful if we didn't do it to gain the power this way. You know, why aren't you going to the positive rappers? You're saying the negative rappers got the juice, right? Yeah. All right. That's why, because we've done something a special way. Now, to come to us and tell us, you just can't tell it, can't diss us. You got to say, Ice, we need your help versus uh, y'all is wrong. If you want help, then we can get help. But you got to come to us correct. I think that's what he's saying. Well, no, he isn't. He's saying, I want to see you out of business, and I'm saying, I want to see you out of business, because I'm from the street, and that's how we play. I'm saying, <coughs> I'm saying that we need, to, we need to talk, because you see, people, the young people are looking at you. We really need to stop hassling among ourselves and really get together and try and make this into something positive. We cool. really need to do this. Now he's right, As a right. parent, do, do yeah. you respect Ice-T and, and the message that he might get across the kids? A lot of his stuff has, a lot of his music is positive. A lot of it. And I'm not even here really about Ice-T. I'm here about these other lyrics that are, that I have a big problem with. Some of it was d in done on, mm -hmm. on the videos in the front. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of problems with that because the young people are just jumping up and, you know, I want to lick you up and down. I mean, like, give me a break. Mm -hmm. Some of these t-shirts walking down the street, mm -hmm. you want somebody coming to you telling you to back up? In a, in a not so nice way and then coming to you for help it's just so contradictory we have to now take stock on what we what we have in front of us we have to try and save our youth mm -hmm. we have to save our youth may I add something to mm -hmm. that um, a lot of the the um, inferences that she's referring to are things that I know all about Onyx some of these other groups that have sexually explicit music very violent music I have to say that with our publication, under no circumstances are the rappers allowed to really discuss those types of issues. We discuss more positive issues with the publication. In, in the instance of Onyx, we had them discuss education. Very few people know this, but they read quite a bit. They read books. Uh, they, they're voracious readers, and we, we discuss this, well, it's in one of our current issues. They even give a suggested reading list. Well, these are I, the things that the young yes. people do read, though. Yes. So, I mean, it's hard. There's, there's, there's certain things that maybe so, we don't know about the community, which I know because I've, I have a program right. that's been over 10 years. Cynthia knows because she's been out for 17 years. But my point is this. As a responsible adult, I am taking the time out to make sure that I find out these kinds of things about our entertainers so that this is the information that will 
will be disseminated to the youth. Now, I think that other people are going to have to be equally as responsible, and we can solve some of these problems. For instance, we keep complaining about videos. Rappers are actors in the videos. Who is getting these videos to the networks that the little children are actually watching? Rappers are not responsible for that. There are individuals who are, and these are the people that we need to talk with now. You know, there are many videos that I don't feel should be seen on public TV. But we have, to band, talk yeah. to, we have to talk to the people that are responsible for these videos actually getting into the hands of our younger children. I think, let me, I think you're right, and that's one of the reasons why we took some of the, uh, what we considered offensive material and left them at this doorstep of Sony as a representative of the industry. <laughs> but, but Dice T said something, and I don't want to lose that because that's our aim. He said, Reverend, if you say that you need us mm -hmm. to help with some of these things, then we'll listen. And he said, you say you want to shut me down? I say I want to shut you down because that's how we play. Mm -hmm. All right, so right. I'm... We, have, I'm we have about 30 seconds. Okay, right? I'm saying, Ice-T, we need you. Right. And oh, on, I'm saying that if we can, away from this, talk about how we can get together, I'm down with that. And all I'm saying is that I represent all hardcore, not just me. I'm not here just to back myself up because all them brothers are my brothers. Now, if you don't like the way they do it, we got to discuss it. But you just can't come out dissing my homies. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. We want to talk. If you want to use us, we got to come correct. That's all. Just come correct. Okay. I want to thank everybody for a discussion tonight. We, as always, don't have enough time. We've tackled many different issues tonight and heard many opinions. It's hard to define what's right or wrong when we talk about censorship. Freedom of speech, but as a member of the hip-hop community and of the larger urban community, dialogues like these are necessary among parents, young people, and all of us, so we can begin to understand, respect each other. Hopefully, this is a step in the right direction. Thanks to all of you for watching. I'm Ralph McDaniels. I want to thank my guests for joining me tonight, and have a good night. <laughs>